Hey, my name is Josh Smith, uh, president of Montana Knife Company, and I've got my friend Tier Simak here. And uh, we are going through individual pieces of our medical kit, our IFAC. And today we're gonna be covering the quick clot gauze. Uh, when you get in a situation in the field where you've punct got a puncture or a bleed or a cut, uh, the first thing you need to do is stop the bleeding. And uh, this gauze is specially designed for that. Uh, I'm gonna stop talking now because I really don't know what I'm talking about. Uh, but we're gonna wound this piece of meat. And then uh, Tier is gonna explain how to properly use this gauze, uh, why you should have it in your pack. Um, it's pretty easy to imagine uh, situations in the field, especially as hunters when we're using sharp knives, as to when and why you would need this. Uh, but I would also encourage you to think about it even a situation in a vehicle Having a kit like this in your vehicle where potentially glass in a car accident, uh, sharp metal, uh, even just uh, it, you know having a pack like this around if you own a ranch or a farm, uh, there's always a chance uh, of getting cut uh, pretty bad or punctured, especially in, in cases like that. So, Tier, I'm going to let you take over and tell us how to use this stuff. Thanks, Josh. Your IFAC or individual first aid kit comes with two different types of gauze. It comes with two of the quick clot gauzes and one of the compressed gauze. Now Josh, ask me why I'd want to use this quick clot gauze over this compressed gauze. Tier, why would you want to use the quick clot over the compressed? That's an excellent question, Josh, Thank and you. I'm glad you asked. The quick clot gauze is impregnated with a substance called kaolin, which is just a fancy word for clay, that, uh, that reacts with blood to speed the clotting factor. I knew that. Of course you did. Now, if you're a combat veteran, especially from the early days of Afghanistan or Iraq, this name, Quick Clot, is not a stranger to you. But this is probably a different formula than what you used back then. Uh, the old Quick Clot formula had some exothermogenic qualities. And I use that word just because I know you wouldn't understand what it is. Sounds spicy. It is. Super spicy. That's really what it was. It was a spicy bandage. Uh, when it hit blood, or really any liquid, it would get really hot, uncomfortably hot. Uh, especially for the casualty and the medic working on the person. This doesn't have that. This is a, a different formula, and it's, a, it's that clay substance that's in there. No, no spicy bandage on this guy. Okay. Now, the, the uses for this uh, are really any type of bleed. It will work, it'll work on a paper cut. It's overkill, but it will work on a paper cut. What this is really designed for is areas where you can't use a tourniquet or when you've got a deep cut uh, and you can find the source of the bleed. And that's really what you need for this, is you need to be able to find the source of the bleed, which I'll demonstrate. I'm here with my medical assistant, Sadie, and I'm going to demonstrate, with her assistance, how to properly pack a wound with quick clot gauze. This is a two-step process. We have our wound, and the indication for this is you've got a major bleed that you cannot uh, put a tourniquet on because of the location or the patient itself or you're converting a tourniquet, um, you're, you're making a pressure dressing after applying a tourniquet. Either way, you've got a serious bleed under there. First step is to take out your compressed gauze, not the quick clot gauze, but the compressed gauze. We're gonna open this up and uncompress it. You say uncompress it, we're really just unrolling it so that we can create a ball out of this. We don't have to do the whole thing, we just need to fluff it up a little bit. You can see how much more mass we have now that it's not compressed. Sadie, take that in your hand just like that. Here's our wound. I want you to put direct pressure directly down on that wound. Pressure! Pressure, I said, Sadie. Pressure! <laughs> there we go. Next step, we're going to take out our quick clot gauze. Again, this is impregnated with kaolin, a mineral clay that reacts with the blood to speed up the clotting process. This one I'm not going to fluff up. What I'm going to do with this guy is I'm going to grab a corner. Okay, grab a corner, keeping the rest in my hand so it's not dragging all over in the dirt. And, and on the count of three, I want you to take that off. And what I'm looking for here is, this. remember, this is actively bleeding. For demonstration purposes here, we just have a rump roast. But if this was an actual bleeder, I need to find the source of that bleed. And in order to do that, I need there not to be a big pool of blood there. So Sadie's doing an excellent job of 
kind of mopping up that blood and putting pressure on there to keep it from bleeding more. But she hasn't actually stopped the bleeding. So as soon as she lifts her hands away, I'm going to take that corner and I'm going to put my, my hand with that gauze in the wound, feeling for the actual source of the bleed, whether it's an artery or vein. It'll feel like the end of a hose. All right, three, two, one. And I've lost the, the wound, which is pretty common. Okay, so put your hand back again. And we're mopping up the blood that just came out. And three, two, one. I'm in the wound channel. And I've actually got a piece of 550 cord in there, so I actually really have something to feel for. And I found it, and I'm holding my finger with the quick clot gauze underneath it on top of the source of the bleed. This is where it gets a little tricky. Now I need to shove the rest of this, or as much as the wound cavity will allow, underneath my finger while maintaining pressure and control of the source of that bleed. So jamming under my finger, replacing pressure. Jamming under my finger, replacing pressure. Jamming under my finger, replacing pressure. And it'll get easier to manipulate the more guys you put in to the wound. Now with a living casualty, we'd have a little more resistance in the wound. But it is not uncommon in a junctional bleed, places like the groin or the armpit, to use this entire roll because there's a lot of space in there, especially in the armpit. All right, I've completely filled the wound cavity with my quick clot. So what I'm gonna do now is just like I had uh, Sadie fluff up that gauze, that compressed gauze, I'm going to unroll this and wad it up. I want this to be a big wad to be able to put pressure directly on that wound. And I'm gonna hold that. All right, we've got our impregnated gauze packed into the wound. Now we need to secure it so our patient can either walk or we can transport the patient out to higher medical care. Really difficult for somebody to hold direct pressure on that wound, especially a junctional bleed, while we're transporting the patient. So we're gonna secure this with a, uh, a ball of compressed gauze and an elastic bandage, all of which are in your individual first aid kit. Okay, so Sadie's our, our casualty here, and we're gonna transfer this wound to her armpit. Go ahead and raise your arm, Sadie. Okay, so in here, you can see that there's nothing, there's nowhere to actually put a tourniquet, and that's why we packed the wound with the quick clot gauze. We still have our balled up gauze, and you can use additional things to, uh, to create pressure in here. The, the idea is we need something about the size of a baseball in her armpit to compress against this gauze. Okay, so I'm putting that directly over the wound, and Sadie, if you can hold that there. Anytime you can get your casualty involved in their own care, it's a good thing. It, it controls, it helps them, give them sense of, sense of control, and, uh, and which, can have a little bit of a calming factor in, in an otherwise really tense situation. Okay, so she's holding pressure there. Now I'm taking out my, my compression bandage, which is not much different than an ace wrap or an elastic bandage you'd find at a local pharmacy. The difference is it's vacuum sealed and compressed, so it's easier to pack. There's a little piece of Velcro on here as well, which we probably won't be using for this, but we'll show that in another video. Okay, so I'm putting this gauze pad directly over what we call a power ball. And you'll notice that I stretched my elastic bandage out prior to putting it over the wound. All right, now Sadie, go ahead and hold that again. Okay. And I'm going to stretch just a few inches out at a time because I want all that compression from the elastic bandage. All right, I've got pressure. Hold your other arm up. There we go. I'm going to wrap around making sure that I don't lose control of the bandage. All right, this arm down again. There we go. And this has a clip on it. Just gonna slip that over there, slip that in there. All right, and we're gonna secure this with, with the clips. They're attached. And there we go. And when she puts her arm down, it's going to create more pressure on the bandage. Do you feel pressure in your armpit right yeah. now? Great, then I did my job. And so did Sadie, good job. Good.